Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my first season. Greg and I have never worked together before, but we did meet in XGO reunion in Cancun. My first season in Turks and Caicos in 1989, I was a sailing and windsurfing geo. Fun fact number one, I did not know how to sail or windsurf. Fun fact number two, I got married in Club Med Paradise Island in 1992 and conceived my daughter Emily there on our honeymoon. Fun fact number three, fast forward to 2019, I worked with my daughter Emily in Tricks and Caicos where she was a sailing geo, and yes, she was my boss. My name is Cheese, and this is my first season. Cheese, how are you, sir? I'm good, thank you. Okay, let's just get out of the, let's just get this out of the way because people might think I gave you this nickname because I've nicknamed a few geos in my time. So uh, true or false, I, I I did not give you this nickname, right? No, you didn't. <laughs> okay, so how far back does this nickname go? I'm, I'm guessing pre Club Med. Oh, way pre Club Med. I was you know four or five years old, and I used to didn't like cheese at all. So I have a big family. We got four boys and a, and a sister, and they all just started bugging me about cheese, eat cheese, stupid cheese head, and then. Went off to school and teachers and mothers and fathers and friends all called me cheese and just kind of stuck. Kind of a stupid name, but it stuck for a long time and it's still here today. And question, are you lactose intolerant now? Not at all. I like cheese right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lucky. Okay. I can't eat it anymore, but I do miss it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. We had your your daughter on and I remember meeting you like, you know, you and I are so dumb that we we can't remember if we met at XGO two or three. So we don't, none of us can remember if we met in 2008 or in 2010, but we knew it was in Cancun and you were, uh, you were always getting people geared up to play volleyball. Even you got me off my chair and I just wanted to relax. So I can tell you're very good at your job in club men because... Uh, you got me who swore he wasn't going to play a sport that whole week playing beach volleyball every day. So congrats to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you know how, how we do here. Well, we did have uh, Jenner on. So he gave us a bit of details about your, uh, about your, you know, what you did before Club Med. So if you can take me back to uh, maybe what you were doing for work, were you going to school and how'd you find out about Club Med? Well, we were, uh, we were uh, back home at my house. We had a rented a house we called the Pack Shack because everybody all my friends all moved into there and Jenner just finished up his master's and Hammer was a real estate guy and I was working at Canada Safeway. So I was just a produce clerk and working away. And for some reason, we were talking about going on this trip to Australia. It was a 10 stop Pacific Rim tour. And we didn't, we didn't know exactly where we we're going, but we picked all these spots and places we went to. And we had one place to go to fill in this 10 stop trip that we had and uh, a friend of ours Sparrow I don't know if you know Don Yates but Sparrow said hey my family went to uh, Tahiti Morea uh, for a holiday in Club Med it's great you should go there so that was our first stop on our trip we ended up in Tahiti Morea and had some muscles there and invited us uh, to stay for a few weeks that's what we did now, just a question before we go on. You called your place the Pack Shack. Uh, yeah. Why is that? Why is that? Oh, we were packing everybody in. <laughs> oh, <had> okay. <laughs> and we we're young, twenty-year-olds, right? And everybody was moving out of their house, and so everyone packed in. And we got hand-me-down everything. We had like couches that were green, curtains that were orange. So it wasn't the most and, nicest and place. Question: Did you have a large wooden spool for a table and? Plastic milk crates for chairs? Please say yes. <laughs> no, we actually had chairs. We had oh, a lot okay. of people giving stuff away back then, you know, everybody was <laughs> renovating. So, but nothing matched in the house. So it was pretty funny. Before you actually go to travel to Australia, you stop into Tahiti and you met, you meet probably one of the greatest people I've ever met, Hansel Moss from the Bahamas, correct? Yes, I agree. One of the, one of my favorites of all time. But how, how did exactly did he convince you guys to like you kind of working out pair there, right? When you met him? Right. We were on a three month, a three month trip. And so we arrived there and we had everything planned. We'd spend, you know, the one week in Tahiti, then we went to New Zealand, and then we went to Australia, and, and we and we landed in a bunch of different places in Australia. So it was a three month trip. So we're all sitting there and we get into this place. And I remember we had this boom box and we were recording our trip because, you know, Hammer and Jen and I had never really been away before. Right. So we were recording this trip. And I remember the first week 
and we were on this thing going, this place is the crap. So we're going to go back and then beat up Sparrow for, you know, telling us to go to this thing, right? So we're all laughing. And then we met this water ski, Joe. We went down to water ski and we met this guy named uh, Alain Barrett, which we call Popcorn. He was the chief of water ski there. So we hung out there quite a bit and we drank and partied with him for the full week. And then I guess they, they just needed some workers, right? So Hansel, you know, came over to us and said, hey, you guys want to stick around? And we said, sure. And Hammer went into tennis, not knowing anything about tennis because the tennis instructor had to leave. And Jenna and I went into snorkeling. So we were right on the beach snorkeling. So that's what we did for the next two, two and a half weeks. And uh, we just fell in love with it, like most deals do, right? It was phenomenal meeting all these great people. And, you know, and here we are, young 20-year-olds uh, in this gorgeous place with gorgeous people and beautiful water and yeah we were we, we were there man <laughs> it's good all right so you go and you you finish your three month trip then yeah. then what then what do you decide what to do can you go back to normal life after that yeah we went back to normal life and jenner was applying uh, to to go into more schooling and hammer went back to real estate and i went back to uh safeway you know grocery store and you know we kept talking about what we should do and and have that offer that uh, Hansel uh, offered to us, right? So we just decided, let's go. So we fold Hansel and he said, yep, no problem. You guys get your ticket and come to Turks and Caicos and never heard of Turks and Caicos before. And I went to my boss at Safeway and he really liked me. I worked hard there for him, right? And I said, hey, you know, I, I want to go six months and go to this place, Turks and Caicos. I'm going to be able to work this place called club med and and he says you know what i'll hide your name because he didn't want me you know you can't just leave right so he put me on like sick leave or whatever for six months right and that's what we did we went off and uh, we landed in uh turks and caicos and not knowing where what we're gonna do yeah so you said in your intro so you were immediately put on the windsurf and sailing team and your fun fact number one was you didn't know how to windsurf or sail yeah uh, but all. but you grew up in british columbia right or yeah, but you know. So, had you never, never thought of uh, trying either? Well, no. Yeah, I think I remember. You know, in school and in high school or something, we had one week. We went and learned how to 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 do some sailing. Well, that was about it, right? I had no experience in it. You know, we were water skiers, right? You know, we go uh, to the lakes and stuff and and water ski, right? But that was about it. You know, when I went into to sailing and windsurfing, right? it was brand new to me, but it was fun. It was really interesting. Well, sailing, you know, I used, I used to brag I could teach sailing in 10 minutes. That That's easy. But did you uh, learn how to windsurf at all? I mean, you could you can teach a beginner to windsurf without having done it, because as you know, it takes a good three months to know how to windsurf. So you're basically picking up picking up guests in the security boat when they can't get back, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I had a chief of sailing, Eric, right? And he was really good, right? So I get there and you know, we had a pretty good crew there and, you know, he said, went out and taught me how to windsurf. And every day uh, when I got there, I had to go do an hour of windsurfing, right? And, you know, and, you know, he'd take me out the boat and we'd rescue people and all this kind of stuff. So I think it was about two weeks into it. We go out for a rescue and he says, okay, you're windsurfing back. And I was way out by the reef and and I go, uh, what? And he goes, yeah, you're going to sail back. So I jumped in the water. He took the, the guy that was on the windsurfer and back in. And I got on there and I got back. So he was pretty happy about that. And from then on, it, you know, I always said to people about windsurfing that, you know, windsurfing is really tough at the start. But you learn quickly. Once you learn your balance and you learn what wind is, uh, you, you, you learn really quick. So living on a beach, you know, for eight hours a day, it was, it, 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 I got, got it going pretty good. Right. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Oh yeah. If you have the time, if you have, yeah. If, uh, you know, if you got the time, it's quicker, but you know, a guest comes on vacation and they want to do all the other sports, but they think they're going to pick up windsurfing in an hour, but you know, you're not even on the board in that hour. You're just, and that's normal. I started the same way. You're falling off left and right. You know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you know what? I, I ended up being a pretty good beginner lesson because I was going through, all the beginner stuff. Right. But, you know, uh, you know, we all have the stories where these guys come by and they go, Oh yeah, I'll take a board. Have you ever windsurfed? Oh yeah. I said, okay, if you get in trouble, just wave. And you know, a guy gets on there and he's falling down and drifting out to sea and you see him waving and we kind of wave back and give him a little bit of a hard time. And then you go pick him up and 
Hey, I thought you had a windsurf. And the guy would go, well, what do you think? It's windsurfing. Well, how hard could it have been? I saw it on TV. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> Only one of the hardest sports in the world, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> now, yeah. now, how long, how long were you uh, in Turks approximately? Well, I was in there just over six months. Okay. Now, uh, and as you know, like, like windsurfing, people say they know how to do it, but when they, when you take out a, a big Hobie cat catamaran, you know, 16 or 12, I guess like my whole theory was about GMs. Is your job is to kill yourself. When you come here, my job's to prevent you. So how did you deal with this? the people that said they knew how to sail and they didn't, did you ask them trick questions or anything? Like say it was oh, a little rough. You, know what? You, you did all your stuff, but we had lasers back then, right? Oh, lasers. Okay. That's not so bad. Well, our lasers were great. So, you know, here's a story. I had a gentleman that came in and, you know, I go, Hey, do you know how to surf? You know, which way the wind's going, you know, I do a couple of those little things and tell us an offshore breeze. And he looks at me and this guy must've been probably 50 or 60 years old and said, Hey kid, I've been, I've been sailing longer than you've been alive. Right. And I said, Oh, okay, sure. Go ahead. And, uh, you know, we do this getting life jacket and he gets out there and within three seconds, he's playing with the rope and the mask comes down, knocks him in the head. He falls in the water. He's got the bleed blood coming from his head. So take him to infirmary, blah, 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 blah. You know, two days, two days later, he comes back and says to me, Hey man, I'm sorry. I've just never sailed one of these little boats. I apologize. So we go through a lesson with him in the whole type of thing. And I just said, you know what? Just got to remember the boom's really low on this thing and, and just don't get caught up with your rope and stuff. Just get where the wind is blowing the sail away from you. Right. So, so he and he gets in there and 30 seconds, I scream at him. When boom comes again, he catches the boom time, capsizes, gets out and says, I quit. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> And he was, you know, I sailed 30 footers all over. Yeah, 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 exactly. I don't know. It's, I don't know. I just, I'm just mystified by this because I would, I would never think of doing, you know, something like, like, you know, and these were lasers. So they're a lot, you're a lot closer to the ground, but you've seen, you've probably seen your share of people capsizing a Hobie cat on a winnie day going completely over the top. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, sure. I've, I've seen some bad cap sizes i'm sure you have so it's a lot easier to hurt yourself in a hobie than a than a laser but i was always curious like um like we my time we developed a test of three questions and if you got even one wrong we weren't going to let you go out but some people got all three wrong and these were basic basic beginner <laughs> questions and they still like well you just said you sailed around the world yeah and, and again i just asked you what the difference between a tack and a jibe is you said there isn't one <laughs> so so this <laughs> makes me think you haven't sailed around the world <laughs> yeah. now well, the lasers you know it's interesting because the lasers were really neat boats that were fast and yeah responded quickly and you know, you, you know, you do that sport on fed in the pool, right. Where you demonstrated yes. all the sports. Right. Yeah. So the guy before me, before he left, he would do the demonstration and he'd climb the mask all the way to the top and yes. then all the way down. Yes. So my whole entire season. Cause I had to do the, the sport on fed and with the boat. Right. I tried to climb up this mask every single time I got to the top, but I usually capsized. So I think I made it by the end of the season, but all season once a week that's what i'm trying to do well yeah it's i've, I've only seen that once but yeah that's 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 not an easy uh, thing to do right no 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 it's, <laughs> uh, i think i've only seen that once in 10 years so yeah but the guys that do do it are pretty uh pretty agile yeah, <laughs> yeah no now, kidding. now is it during the season and you can tell me if you don't want to talk about this did you did you purchase an acre of land on turks yeah, 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 yeah. You did. Okay, now, okay, just uh, before you answer that question, so I'm wondering, like, um, you know, I did my first season in Turks, and but never did it occur to me, like, hey, I wonder how much an acre of land is, and I'm going to buy it. So, what, where, where is the, where does the germ of the idea first get in your head? Like, like, how does that happen? Uh, you know, when I was 19, turning 20, right, the the real estate market back home here in BC just absolutely crashed. Interest rates are at 17%. And I, you know, I talked to my mom and dad and I said, yeah, maybe I should move out and real estate's down. And one of my best friends just became a realtor also. Right. And I got this ridiculous deal on this house where it was, you know, it was a pretty beat up old house, but it was a five bedroom kitchen upstairs, downstairs. And I ended up buying for $86,000. Right. And it was ridiculous. And I got a deal and all my friends moved in with me and, and paid my mortgage. And, you know, then when we decided to go to Club Med, I was still living there. So while I was on this trip, three month trip that we went on with Hammer and Jenner, I got a phone call from one of my buddies, the real estate guy he says, Hey, your houses went up, uh, up to $200,000. Well, 
from eighty six thousand to two hundred thousand dollars, right? And how much you know, time? And how much time were the Asians? Wait, wait, geez, uh, what was the yeah. time period that it went up? Are you talking in the yeah, matter then, of uh, so I, months? It was about four and a half years. Okay, four after and a half I years. bought it when it okay. went. So I was about twenty five years old when I went off to to Club Med and that three month trip. So can, can, can I ask you another question? For did yeah. anyone think you were crazy buying a house at such a young oh, 100%. age? Oh, percent. Oh, okay, crazy sorry. Oh, okay. I was wrong. Okay. <laughs> Okay, just curious. Because I was working at Safeway. We got paid pretty good back then, right? We were, I was making about $17 an hour back in that time, right? Which was pretty good. I saved myself up nine grand, you know, be, you know, and, and my mom co-signed for me, mom, dad, and told me what a mortgage was and how it worked. So it seemed pretty simple to me, right? And, you know, at the time, people were losing their houses, right? You know, and then then all of a sudden, about four or five years later, when, when uh, you know, when China went back or Hong Kong went back into a different uh, regime, right? All the Chinese people came to our area and were buying two, three houses on the street. So it went up really fast, you know, probably went up. You know, when I left for this trip, it was probably worth about 120,000. And by the time I sold it, it was 200,000. And I was still in Australia at the time. My mom, I, I transferred mom power of attorney. My girlfriend, now my wife, Michelle, was kind of looking after things there for the three months, right? So anyways, to, to go quicker, I, you know, I'm sitting in the Turks and Caicos Islands with about $190,000 Canadian. And uh, Sean Scuba and I were I joking. I said, I'm going to go buy something here. I got money. So we went and looked at these places. Um, I don't know if you know Jill, that the photographer back then, but Jill had some connections. And we we went off and, and looked at these couple of places and we looked at this one in Long Bay Hill. We looked at this one property, $45,000 for one acre on the beach. And, uh, and the one off the beach, you know, right across the street with the laneway, it was 15,000 or 20,000. So I went and sat down with Jose Allier that's been around the world, chief of the village. And he said, Glenn, I don't know if I would invest in a country that you don't live in. So he scared me away from the $45,000 waterfront and I end up buying the $15,000 off the beach. The waterfront, I sold this property about three years ago to get out of debt. You know, my kids went to school. So I sold the $45,000 one was worth $1.8 million that I could have sold. This one was worth 200 US. So. Well, I, I was just going to say that, um, yeah, had you purchased that waterfront, okay, you would have had it how much? It would be, it was about $1.8 million. Oh, so you would have been a millionaire. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so that and you know me and Sean were talking. Sean ended up buying a place. He held his place. He had he bought his place more into the the town, right? Like when we were in Turks, I don't know what year you were there, but when we were 94. There, 94. Well, in 89, there must have been maybe only 40 cars on the whole entire island. There was not no grocery stores. There really there was nothing there, right? So there, it wasn't a very desirable place. And and Turks is actually a pretty ugly place, except for the water. And the beaches, right? Yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, I guess in the uh, when you were there, there wasn't there wasn't no much trees. And yeah, exactly. No, no bunny rabbits and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to. Uh, do you are you still in touch with uh, Jose Alio? I'm just curious. Yeah, you know. <laughs> do you ever do you ever jokingly like uh, you know <laughs> you know say hey I could have been a millionaire? <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, I've never actually brought that up. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I talked to Hansel about it because I also talked to Hansel about it, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it would have been quite interesting, you know, but uh, wow. life keeps going This on. is an it's incredible true. story. Not only that, you're probably like the richest au pair I've ever heard of. Like if you were <laughs> you were au pairing and you had, you just sold a house and you had 190000 in your pocket, I'm thinking, and this yeah, guy's no working kidding. au pair? Like <laughs> we're not even paying him? You know? Okay. Yeah, you know, it's funny. It, it, it was the strangest thing, right? You know, I, I've been a pretty lucky person, you know, in my life, you know, just find something at the right time. And, you know, even Club Med, like I've worked a lot of different villages in Club Med and, and you know, only for like two, three weeks and, and got to know millions of geos right so it's been great it's been really fun I'm, I'm also jealous about one thing because you were you were in turks for the famous hurricane hugo correct oh yeah that was, so that was fantastic where you were they actually closed the, the village every I've, I've been through six hurricanes and everyone's closed so you were evacuated to sandpiper right yeah it was sandpiper half the half the geos went to cancun to help out because they evacuated the people 
I think some of the people went home and some of the people wanted to finish their trip in Cancun. So half, uh, uh, probably 40% of them went to Cancun to help out with the excess work that we've been there. We got sent to Sandpiper, which man, it was like a strangest thing. We get there and they, you know, you can go to a store. And I remember all the girls, first thing they did was go to a store to buy underwear. And, you know, we, you know, we watched a movie for one day. It was pretty interesting. And you didn't have to work there. You're basically on vacation. No, right? we didn't have to work. Uh, I took there, you know, I don't know if you remember Mike that had the um, nursery there. I know who he is. Yeah. Turks. yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. So his daughter was about, I don't know, four years old. And Michelle was actually visiting me at that time. So Michelle and I took their daughter. They said, hey, here, take my daughter. I don't want her to be here in the hurricane. We took her daughter to Sandpiper with us. So oh, really? Was, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah so and jose paid for all of our people that were there to go to disneyland for a day oh, okay wow yeah it was really that's pretty really great that's pretty good like, hey, I, I don't know i can't remember but it must have been like only three or four days or something right so it was pretty quick hitter well you you wrote me um you know you you were kind enough to write me some back information on you and you said particularly that this season in 1989 in turks was so special that GOs would actually cry when their replacement arrived and that no one wanted to leave, right? I mean, uh, yeah. you, you said, and I've never really heard of this, so and you probably never experienced that again, right? I'm guessing. Well, you know what? I tell you, I I, I went, wow. I said to Jenner and Hannah, I go, how, how do these people do this every year? You know, like I was one of the last to leave out of that season. And I remember, you know, a, a GO would say, your replacement's coming in. And Jose was really tough on that. Nobody leaves this village until the replacement comes in and you work with them for two to three days before you leave, right? So people would find out their replacement coming in and they'd start crying. I'm going, what the hell? This is emotional. And Hansel Moss cried and even Jose left before me, right? And I'm going, holy cow, like, this is tough. I phoned my mom and went, mom, this is crazy. You know, you make really good friends here, right? But I never really seen it much after that, like, you know, and Jenner, Jenner and Hammer said they had a couple close ones like that. But, you know, yeah, I don't know what happened. It just everything just gelled that season, I guess. Yeah. No, no. I, I mean, I've, I've only really, really recall one geo crying like he was uh, we were in Italy and, you know, this it was a summer village. So we opened and closed. He was he was from a small village in France. So he'd never been anywhere. And he was crying every when every when every geo left who had been already been at Clement five or ten years left that he was the only guy bawling his eyes out and he says I can't take this anymore I I'm, I I can't work for Club anymore this is too emotional so yeah, so to I go to, to go through a whole season you know like that must have been rough like seeing <laughs> like what a special time right in your life yeah you know it was you know you just think about it for especially for us Canadians there wasn't that many Canadians back then right. And, you know, you, you, like you said, you from Montreal, well, let's go sit in the sunshine. But, you know, like when I do interviews with people and you tell people, oh, uh, yeah, you, you know, you, you do your job and then you go to the bar and you meet people and then you go to dinner and eat with people and then you go to the bar and, you know, and you're allowed to drink with people and you go, yeah, you know, that's just perfect for us Canadians, right? And we did that. Yeah. Every night, and every night it was crazy. It was four o'clock in the morning crazy four o'clock in the morning every night that we'd be there and wow everybody would be partying so are you saying like you do a bit of uh, recruiting in your spare time oh yeah you... i do some recruiting yeah okay all right and now i'm guessing around uh september october you went to playa blanca in 89 yeah yeah we went over to playa blanca now did you we follow what uh, Chief... oh, we all we all picked the uh, hammer myself in general we're going to go to cancun but Hansel talked us out and they needed Hansel there to go help this chief of the village and all this stuff. So we, we ended up going to, uh, yeah, to, to Mexico. Right? Now was, uh, now, cause I, you know, I worked with Hansel for two and a half years and I had to hear about what the, what the greatest chief of sport he was. So was he, was he a great chief of sports? <laughs> he, yeah. He, he, especially in his, own I, no, I, I know he is. I'm, he, he knows I'm teasing, but you know, he, he's the reason I wanted to become a chief of sport was because of Hansel. Cause I would listen to his stories all the time. He was putting me through grueling, punishing and demoralizing workouts. So, you know, and I wished I was there back in his day, you know, like, because obviously I went to Playa in 97, you were there in 89, you know, and everyone who I know who went to Playa, like, is, does Playa hold a special place in your heart? Because it's such a unique village, right? I mean, it's so small, yeah, but it, but everything Playa. is so centralized. It's built into the side of the mountain. Did you like it there? 
Oh, it was great. The, the rooms were the most difficult thing. And when you have arrivals at three in the morning, you were so worried about getting a room that you couldn't find, right? Because you know how it went. It went yeah, yes. 22, 23, 95. Yes. You know? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and we had a lot, you know, like that was three hour bus ride from Port of Vallarta. Oh, right? uh, so, yeah. Oh, the hell so right? I, yeah. I was on that a lot. I was I was one of the geos that they chose to. Oh, you did that. There. You did that regularly, that run? Pretty regular, and that's six so hours. Really that's six hours. Bus though. drivers, and, and uh, I ordered beer, so I had coolers of uh, Coronas. You know, cost me a buck. Yeah, some for two bucks on the way back. But how many times did you have to stop the bus for people to go and uh, you know relieve themselves? <laughs> oh, lots. We had to yeah, stop yeah. The bus because cows on the road. Yes, you know? because that run I only did it once. I did the other one, uh, Hermosillo, I think. Or I can't remember the uh, the airport. I did the shorter one, but I did do it once. And I remember this is hell. Was it six hours? That road mm-hmm. is not that road is not straight. If I recall, it's constantly no. winding. Winding, is it not? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 yeah. It's a long and okay. windy road. Oh and- my God! How did you do that that whole time? Oh. Oh, well, first of all, you know, I always joked, everyone, I never fall asleep. I'm always wet, but we drank so much and stayed up so late half the time, right? One of the guests took a picture of me snoozing in my chair and I was busted, but. Uh, you said you were, you had planned to go there as sailing, but you wound up in circus. Is that true? Yeah, I, I, I did sailing for most of the season and uh, I went over, I, I love trapeze. It was really fun. It was, you know, who, where do you get to the, flying the trapeze so Stefan and Lisa Stefan was the chief of the of the uh, circus there so I would go there my days off and after after we closed down all the time right and you know he taught me how to catch and so that's what I did I went there and I caught and stuff and oh you caught and, too pardon me you caught yeah uh, I did mostly catching did you ever get uh, injured by accident catching no, I had a no. couple kids fly through the air and you know, I kind of they banged heads with me or something, but no, no nothing. Oh, okay, wow. And you like so you liked hanging up because I've tried it, I didn't like it, but you you liked hanging up upside down. Yeah, it was no problem. Oh, okay, <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> now, is it true that when you're a catcher, it's the the rule is that uh, you catch them, that like, they don't try to catch you? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know what? It, you know, it was pretty primitive back then compared to now. You know, the, the geos, some of these geos are phenomenal what they do, right? So it was pretty simple. Catch, knee hand catch and return was most of it. One of my <laughs> biggest stories is I had, we had the Minnesota Vikings in town and all these guys are 250, 300 pounds. Oh, the, uh, wait, the NFL team, Minnesota Vikings? Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, there was about three or four of them with their wives and stuff that came in, right? Okay. So I was up there and this is when, uh, Scotty De Palma was in charge of a circus because Stefan and Lisa had already left. So I was there catching. And, and uh, so this, this one guy kept coming down with the football buddies and he was going to try it, but he was too scared. So finally last day or something, he, he gets enough nerd gets on there and Scotty's down there below and he says, listen, I'm going to hold him up. I'm not, uh, I'm going to hold him up. I said, no, no, let me go for it. I don't think uh, I got it. So uh, the guy comes, I catch him. Wait, 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 cheese. Before you say that, uh, is this a linebacker you're talking about? Like, give us the, I, the ben- I, I, give I us the dimensions of this know. guy and wait before you say anything. Like, what was he? Uh, six two, uh, two forty five. Oh, he, he was six four, probably okay. about two eighty. Okay, so he's a linebacker, tight end, right? I'm guessing linebacker, maybe a small and you, linebacker. So yeah. and okay, so if I recall, so Scotty's on the rope. So you didn't want Scotty to help brace brace you catching him at all right yeah. you want it okay go ahead sorry <laughs> yeah, you get kind of cocky and you think you can do everything so he holds him up and and ruins your swing and i can't throw him back to the bar right so you know i'm mad at scotty i go do it again do it again don't hold him up so you know so he didn't hold him up the second time caught him again threw with all my might he his hand actually touched the bar when he went and that was it he didn't catch it right so but that night at the bar, holy cow, anything I wanted, he was buying me. Gosh darn, does it not hurt to catch someone that big and heavy? <laughs> you know what? If you don't jerk, right? Because, yeah. you know, you got to remember, I'm fully extended. My arms are straight. His arms are straight. If he would have had bent arms or I had bent arms and then the weight hit me, he would have pull, probably pulled me out of my lock. But it worked actually pretty good. And, and you know what? Scotty probably held him up a little bit too, right? Now, was Scotty, was he the chief of circus? Well, he was for about three weeks because Stefan and Lisa, you know, you, you know, Stefan. Is this the chief of village? No, he was chief of, of circus. He, he was, um, he's got a circus school now in Vegas, right? So 
he uh, oh. was our chief and him and his girlfriend were leaving and they're going to Europe and they were going to open up the first circus ever in Europe. And they went there and they offered it for me to come, but I, I declined it. Right. But they went off. So Scotty De Palma was, uh, went over. He was, uh, he was in circus anyways, but he went as chief. They brought me over from sailing and they actually brought a guy from California and it showed up a few times, just a, a GM. Right. And he came and helped out. So we had about a two week period before the new circus team was going to come in. Okay. Yeah. Well, also, I think I get part of your, I guess, part of your reason for declining was that you, you had to go home to get, like you fell into more money, right? Like, I guess, because yeah. you, your, was it your six months, like your, your manager put you on some kind of sick leave. So you had to come back and address that. And then what did he say? Well, the union uh, and, the, and the company were in a battle with something, right? So the, the company was buying out our contracts because, you know, they were heavy loaded and they had the ATOs and all this stuff, right? So they were offering, because they were changing the, the contracts or something, right? So they're offering people that worked at Club Med $30,000 to quit, right? So they could buy out their contract. So, oh, sorry, Safeway. Yeah, Safeway, yeah. that's what it was. So then I, uh, you know, I, I, I said, oh, I don't know, this is a great opportunity. And then Hansel Moss looked at me and said, are you stupid? Go get the money. You can come back. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I went back home. I went back home, took the money, Right. Went back. To, you had to go back and work. So I went back to work for about a month or so. Right. You know, so got the money and, and made some more money. <laughs> okay. Then you say, but your was your next stop, but like, were you working at Paradise Island in 92 or um, were you just traveling through there? No. What I was happening is though. So just about, Jenner was down there. So I called Jenner and said, Hey, I'm going to get married. Oh, Je- Jenner, Jenner was working there. Yeah. Jenner was working okay. there. Okay. So I phoned Jen and I said, oh, you know, I'm going to get married, you know, with my brother. And so I told my brothers and stuff, I think I'm going to get married and all this kind of stuff. And, and uh, he goes, oh, great. Excellent. So I come home and, you know, that week uh, I grab Michelle and take her out for dinner and we get, we, I proposed to her to get married. And, and so we were planning on what we were going to do for our wedding, right? How we're we going to do it, what we're we going to do. So, you know, I talked to Jen in the next couple of days. She says, hey, you should come here. This is like Las Vegas of the, the Caribbean. So we, we thought it was a great idea. Michelle says, yeah, let's go do it. So I went down there a week before Michelle and I worked, you know, taking people to the rooms and stuff, right? Uh, and then Michelle came down for a week and the chief of the village took care of everything. We were going to, you know, oh, we'll just get married and we'll, we'll do this and then we'll go out for dinner and we'll stay at this hotel. And we just, there's a few people coming and da, 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 Chief Hill says, nope, we'll get married here. Full geo uh, wedding right here. Did the whole thing. It was, it was really, really special, right? So. Who was the chief of village? Do you remember? Oh, I can't remember that. I should remember that one. Me too. I think I interviewed somebody from that season. I remember <laughs> Mustafa was there. Okay. I'm not sure if he was chief of the village at the time, but I should have had that written down. Now, your daughter's episode will have aired by the time yours comes out. So in, okay. in her in her intro, she said she was uh, born to be a geo. Do you care to explain that? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a funny one, too. Michelle says to me, oh, you know, I think I could be ovulating, you know, during our honeymoon. I'm like, really? I didn't even think about it. Okay. Nine, nine and a half months later, Emily comes. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. She was, she was and then yes part of so, okay yes so, <laughs> so emily your, your daughter yes was born to be a geo as they say literally okay. yes <laughs> all right and now now i guess from from that time you got married uh i guess life happens but did you go back to playa like in 90 96 for a month that you do no au pair or um... oh yeah yeah for sure so we go back we get married start having a family uh, we have two kids, uh, uh, Emily, and then Sydney's about a year and a half younger than she was, and they were young kids, right? So we uh, wanted to go on a trip. Let's go to Club Med. So we phoned up, play uh, our our old chief of the village was there, right? And he, you know, just talking to him, say, hey, let's which uh, which which chief? Uh, it was it was. Let me think here for a minute. It wasn't Hammer? Oh, oh yeah, Pierre Gagnon. Oh, okay, Pierre. that's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. It was Pierre. And so we talked to Pierre and he goes, Hey, what's funny? Come down and work for a bit. So we said, okay. So we went down and um, Michelle's hostess and I worked, uh, I think the land sports guy was, had to go home or something. So I was land sports there. 
and the kids Basically. went into the kids club and we had a regular life and go pick them up at five and went through home and showered and went through dinner and we did that for a couple of weeks. Well, you and I were there the same year. So I was there in 96, 97, but you know, I was there after, you know, I guess the rainy season. So you were probably there like January, February, March type of thing, right? I guess. Uh, yeah, but we only went for three weeks. Okay. Time. Okay. Did uh, any uh, unusual, any stories from that season or it was all, everything was good? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just, it's just interesting being a geo, you know, with your kids, right. It's kind of fun, right. It, 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 well, was, really, it was really interesting. I enjoyed it. Yeah, because uh, usually the kids I see belong to the um, like the chief of village, right? I don't think I've ever met a, like a geo couples kids before. I think on uh, on, on yeah. in Club Med, but it, so, you know it was a quick hitter, so it was only three weeks. So you remember, you know, there was nothing really crazy that went on. It was just fun. But did they ever because like in, in Turks and whatnot? Did they ever stick you in the in the shows? Like since you were there a full uh, six months, like your first season? Oh yeah, for sure. We oh, yeah. we love the shows. Hammer was great at them. Well, I was, were, were, you good, were you a good dancer back right because oh, okay <laughs> dancers okay so you got you were right by the curtain then basically like tripping over the yeah, curtain, we, right okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay i had a tough time learning kickball change so okay <laughs> yeah pas de bourre yeah okay <laughs> you probably like the comedy numbers i'm guessing right so. oh yeah we, we were doing i was probably a bartender or a guitar player with no guitar and you know yeah but we were, we were in a lot of the shows, you know, you know, back then, you know, you'd rehearse till, you know, one thirty, two o'clock in the morning and then you'd go to the bar after. Right. So. Yeah. Do you have any, um, I forgot to ask you, do you have any Jojo stories from your first season there in Turks? Oh yeah. That was quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, teaching windsurf, right. I used to, we had boards kind of anchored about waist high off the shore. Right. And yeah. where people would be sitting there and I'll be on this board and they'll be waist high watching me do this demonstration and you know to the right of my eye I see Jojo coming and uh I would say okay guys you guys all heard of Jojo yeah and then Jojo would swim right between us and they would freak and run off you know <laughs> Jojo used to you know we were in the water ski shows and you know and Jose would get so mad because this dumb dolphin would knock us off our skis right you know you get well it, yeah and, and windsurfers too like he thought this was hilarious just yeah, dumping yeah, people in, in the water <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever get a chance to uh, swim with them at all? Oh, yeah, lots of times. You know, we used to, you know, we did a kind of a ritual every week or two. We'd go grab some scuba gear, right? And then we would go out the sailing and go find sunglasses from all the people that capsized, right? So we would go get the stuff and go look for uh, sunglasses on the bottom there, right? And, you know, Jozo would come swim with us for a while. It was quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, I've heard like uh, sunglasses, jewelry, wallets, that type of thing. (laughs) Oh, I never got rich on that. Just sunglasses. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the bar beads back then, I think, used to float, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Bar beads are great. <laughs> all right. Cool. Did you have any um, favorite, like, dumb questions from GMs at all? Like, because I, I love, like, to, for example, like, when is it going to stop raining? So did you ever have any dumb questions that you that you remember? That oh, I always yeah, got the rainy ones always, you know, they say, oh, I, I read the brochure. This is not rainy season. Why is it raining? You know, those are kind of. Those. Oh, you, you never got when's it going to stop? That that one didn't bother me, but when they wanted to. No, I never. Time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess I did get a couple of those. You know, they go, you you live here. When's it going to stop? And I'd look over top and see that big black cloud over us, and not in the next couple hours. <laughs> well, I think Freddie Freddie had the best answer to that question because he'd say, "Look at him straight in the face." He go, he goes, "I don't know. I'm I'm geo, not god." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I heard that one. <laughs> you know, the one question you got from the GMs is a lot is going, what are you hiding from? And I go, oh, really? You, you, you got that question? Oh, all the time. They go, what are you doing here? What are you hiding from something? I what? Go, oh, are you serious? Okay. You're being yeah. serious well, right now. I've never heard that. Okay. They couldn't understand why I'd be sitting there, you know, first of all, au pair, and then second, at uh, making $500 or $550 a month. Why are, you do- why are you working here? You know, you can go make more money. And I said, well, well, you know what? I don't, I have $550 in my bank account at the end of the month. When I was at home, I didn't have any money at the end of the month working, right? Well, so yeah. I, I got that quite a bit. Well, yeah. Look at your office, right? I mean, and it's a type of job that you're going to think like, okay, before I go back to corporate life, I'm going to remember this, right? I mean, I think that's why most people do it is before you, like I've had the, I've had a boring job for 14 years now at a university, but I'm glad I had the 10 years where yeah. I had had an exciting job so <laughs> maybe, you know, 
I was a bit of, we were a bit of an older geo at that time. You know, most people were early twenties and stuff, right? We were late twenties. Right. So maybe it was that, I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe wow. they thought I was probably a criminal or something running from, <laughs> no, no, running I, never, from something. I don't know. But, I, you know I, I, I never got that, like that, <laughs> that question put to me that way before. <laughs> what are you running from? <laughs> yeah, that's not quite good actually. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Another thing, yeah, uh, we didn't say this in your intro, but in 2019, you go back to Turks and Caicos and uh, you go do sailing. And uh, who was your who was your boss? Yeah, it was Emily. You Emily, know, your, been, your daughter, right? Yeah, Emily, my daughter. <laughs> wow. You know, for for years, I, I, I continued to go back, right? You know, they have a great program with XGOs. You can go back. So I went back and forth, have a great wife that says, you really want to go be a geo? And I'd go for two weeks, max, or two, three weeks, right? So, you know, 2019, Emily phones up and goes, hey, uh, you want to come down? And I went, why? What's happening? And he goes, oh, uh, the chief has to leave for two weeks, right? So I said, yeah, sure. So I came down there. And, and it was quite interesting, you know. Emily goes, oh, I got to stop calling you dad. Hey, geez, can you go get that boat? So, Oh, is that what she said? <laughs> She was good too. Okay. She was a way better boss than me. I'm such, you know, I'm one of those guys. I said, when I get into a club bed I, I, and sailing, I go, hey guys, listen, I'm going to set up the beach every day. You guys stay as long as you can. Wait, give me one person at nine o'clock to sign people up and stuff, right? You know, I'm only there for two or three weeks. So, you know, I get up, I go set all the boats, get everything ready, right? And, you know, the problem is, is uh, all the, the GMs would come down and they'd try to sign up because, they, you know, they're going scoop or something, right? So, I would start taking people's names, you know, like 8.45 or something. And Emily would come down. What is this? You can't do this. You know, you got to wait till nine o'clock because people get mad at me. So she, she scolded me. And so I always told people, ah, oh, you got to wait till the sign up. Emily's coming down at nine o'clock sharp and she'll sign you up. You guys got to wait in line here. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Strict rules. You got, you got, sc- you got scolded by your daughter, huh? Okay. <laughs> I'm not getting paid for this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That was the funny thing too, because I, I'd go down there and I had my contract and throughout the years, Hammer would phone me in club at cheese. Can you go sign your contract so we can pay you? I go, Hammer, I don't care about the money. I'm in two weeks, but they'd always make me. So this time going down there, the HR guy had to come down to sailing to find me to sign my contract. I throw it in my cubicle and he, Emily grabs it a couple of days later, looks at it and goes, what the heck? How could you be making more money than me? Oh, really? So I, I was making I don't know, 100 bucks more than her for my time there. So I wasn't too happy about that. Oh, wow. I've been okay. here for four years and you're making more money than me. <laughs> well, that's nice. And I, and I think like, um, yeah, also in the beginning, like I think what came up one point where I think Emily had just been born and you had an opportunity to, to go and, your wife, you were probably thinking, my wife's never going to let me. And she said, look, if you take Emily, I'm fine. Is that what happened? Like where? Yeah, yeah it's kind of like we just had our, our second daughter, Sydney, right? So mm-hmm. Sydney must have been two or three weeks old and pretty brand new. And Jenner phones me and goes, hey, this is my last season. You got to come down. You know, I think Oriole was the chief of the village or something. You got to come down. He said, you can come down. And, you know, I hang up the phone. And my wife goes, what's that all about? I go, you know, Jenner's being crazy. He wants me to come down. And uh, visit him, you know, and Michelle's, you know, pondered it for a few hours or a day or something and says, you know what, if you're able to take Emily down, it'll free me up and I can just concentrate on the newborn, Sydney, right? So phone Jenner up and proposes that to him and Jenner phoned me back, you know, the next day and says, yep, no problem, bring Emily. So we arrive in, in uh, Cancun, uh, there's a big group of people waiting for us and Jenner's got a badge and a geo badge saying village princess and puts that on Emily, uh, you know, so, so Emily, I don't know, is almost two, just under two years old, right? So we're there and there's no kids in the village at the time, right? So all the geo girls just couldn't believe it. They loved it. They, they babysitted her and walked around every time I see Emily be with another set of geos or something, right? So yeah, it was, that was really fun. Wow. That's some great pictures from that. And, you know, there's pictures of Emily, you know, you know, through her whole entire life, uh, you know, that's the year when um, Jenner was there and uh, uh, who else was there? Oh yeah. Hendel, he was, a, he was, a, he was there as chief of sports and he has a picture of Emily in her arms, you know, at a very young age. Right. And, uh, and then Emily ends up working for Hendel on his last season uh, in, in, in Thailand. Right. So, that's right. so I had the picture of Emily that was like a 
you know, 18 months old and then a picture of Emily when she was uh, there for his last season. So that's quite interesting. Well, did I ever, did I ask you how you and um, like, how did you and Hammer, like, how did you all guys, were you going to a school together? Like how'd you first? Yeah. Together? Hammer's Jenner's age and they're good friends, played sports together, hung out together. We're all good buddies. I was the younger brother. Right. So, yep. That's how, that's how we knew. Okay. And all your time in Club Med, did you meet any, um, besides the Minnesota Vikings, any other celebrities or athletes or singers? Did you, do you recall me? Yeah, but there was always, there was always someone came in, you know, we had hockey players and yeah, they, you know, there, there's lots of different people that came in, right? And, and you recognize them? I, I never usually did. I never okay. <laughs> okay. My wife would or, or, or Red, he's great. Red would know everybody, right? So you could be at the dinner table with Glenn Anderson and you wouldn't know, like, Oh yeah, Glenn Anderson was part okay. of Turks. He was always yeah. coming in there. He, you know, he came and played street hockey with us. We, we got some hockey sticks down there. I don't know how we got them down there, but someone got the hockey sticks down there, and we had like well, they, they, were, they were still there in '94. I can tell you. Um, yeah. Now, did yeah, you? We, now, we used to play just off of the um, where the theater is in that area. So, is that where you were playing? Too? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Didn't change. Yeah, you know, we we put big productions on. You know, Jose would say, "You're in charge." You know, and so. Hammer and everybody, we'd get, you know, cocktails going and we'd have food and we'd have an announcer and we'd be playing hockey. <laughs> now, when you when you were in Playa, was the um, was the outdoor uh, hockey rink created yet when you were there? Uh, I don't think it was created there, but I don't think, yeah, I'm not even. No, Greg, no, Greg Snyder, uh, Greg Snyder built that. I uh, I just spoke with the geo, who, the gestionnaire who was there. So I always heard the story. It was Greg Snyder that built it. And that's true. So I got that confirmed, but I was just yeah. curious if you played. Yeah, we didn't, that. I don't think we played hockey in okay. play. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, pretty good resort for that. Wow. This has been incredible so far. Jeez. This is pretty <laughs> right? amazing. Pretty amazing life you've had there, my friend. Yeah. You know, I, I, I keep telling everybody <laughs> I'm the, the luckiest person, man. I, you know, like, you know, it's 60 years old, you know, you still get, Hey, Glenn, you want to come down and work sailing? And, you know, if I can fit it in. I go, you know, they just asked me to go down to back to Turks. Right. But they wanted me to come uh, at the end of May, but my daughter's Sydney's getting married in June. So I just couldn't pull it off. Right. So. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah. It's, fun. it's fun. <laughs> Am I forgetting to ask you any Clement stories? Like, are there any other stories you wanted to share with us? That you can recall, I don't know, something funny happened to you or, or something that wasn't funny then is funny now. Uh, I don't want to let you go until unless, you know, unless there was something else you wanted to say or I forgot to ask you. Uh, uh, you know, there's all, I got thousands of funny stories. You know, one of my biggest ones was with Freddie, right? You know, Freddie would be with Hammer, Jenner, or Red or something over the years wait wait this is appropriate right okay yes very so I, appropriate. So I, I know, know my talking uh, about oh okay yeah yeah no well, you mentioned a whole crew there I went, oh, oh wait a minute okay yeah so uh my poor wife and you know she'd have to get a phone call at usually at three o'clock in the morning with a junk drunk jenner you know hey talk to freddie talk to red talk to this so i talked to freddie on the phone three o'clock in the morning for probably about two three four five years i can't even remember right so finally i uh, uh, Hammer calls me one time when he's in, where was he? He was in, um, I can't even remember. But anyways, he was in one of the villages, right? And he asked me to come down. So I come down there, right? And uh, I go down to Saline and there's Freddie. Freddie, cheese! You know, we haven't even met each other, but we thought we knew each other because over the last five years, we were just, you know, on the phone once in a while. So there's Freddie. First time I'm meeting Freddie there, right? So brings me into the Saline shack and has a, tequila and makes me have a shot with them but yeah those those are the kind of the funny stories right you know well yeah 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 no it was this was uh was that in um turks no you, where was that? That was in mexico which one not a luthra no sorry that was bombs it would have been playa or did you ever work uh like Xtapa or watuko yeah it was Xtapa. that's where it was that was yeah i worked Xtapa. now oh, okay. watuko is close okay you know, thought, by the time i started you know, after my geo life at the start, it was closed. Did you ever work uh, Columbus Isle? Columbus Isle, yes. Oh, I yeah. worked there about four years ago. Would you, do you, you like it? Do you think it was beautiful? I thought it was great. Yeah, it, it, it's a nice setup for Club Med. I really liked it. The sailing was great, right? You know, I, you know, you see the planes arrive, you know. Yeah, I, I liked it. It was you pretty got, good. You got touched. It you was got hard to- for me a little bit because it was a lot of French, like heavy French, right? And, yeah, you know, one time I'm in this meeting, you know, I'm, I'm working with pirate stuff or I'm in the, a sports meeting and they're speaking French and 
you know, I got to pick a little bit of it up here and there, but I wasn't really good at it. So, you know, I hear they are speaking French and I'm just sitting there. I've been in the club that geo for a long time, so it's not bothering me, but they're speaking in French. And then finally, Pirate says, hey, you got cheese here. He doesn't speak French when he speak English. And they started going back and forth. Well, he's stupid if he doesn't know doesn't know French. And they just, you know, all the stuff. And almost a little bit of a fight cut when I go, guys, I don't care. I'm just here. I'll be a good geo. Don't worry. <laughs> so... And you get it. So it was tough, you know, sitting at tables a little bit, right? Because, you know, the whole table would be French, right? And, you know, you go, hey, can I sit with you guys? And, you know, I just I just couldn't keep up. They just went too fast for me. But because you were in uh, Columbus, you got to touch base with uh, Hansel Moss again, which... Oh, that was great. You know... Yeah, I mean, I'd see him every morning, go hang out with him at the bikes, right? Yeah, kind of another full circle moment when you met him in uh, Tahiti in, uh, what, 89, right? I mean, here you are. <laughs> On, yeah, the same, yeah. on the same island again. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Besides like the, the Hammer and jo- Jose Aliel and people like that you mentioned and Hansel Moss, is there any, like I don't want you to forget anyone, is there anyone else, anyone else you work with that like that you you liked, that you clicked with? Um, yeah, you know, there's, there's some really good guys. Like, you know, you, you worked with Boone. Boone is great, right? There's, you know, Sergio Anguelius. He was uh, my my sailing geo in one of my seasons. He was great. Stefan and Lisa, you know, yeah, there's just Dave the Wave. I don't know if some of those old names, you know, there are there, there some great people, right? Oh, know, heard- over the years, you know, I've met a lot, you know, through Jenner and Hammer working with those guys. You know, they'd always have their key guys with them too, right? So, yeah, there's just so many people, you know. I, I, I've ended up doing a ton of club meds. Maria, Turks, Playa, St. Lucia, Cancun, and Luther, Sonora Bay, Copper Mountain. We went to Copper Mountain with, Emily, she was in Copper Mountain. So, you know, when she was three months old, Jenna was the chief of sports there. You know, Sam Piper, Malaysia, Phuket, Columbus Isle, Paradise Island, stuff, you know. I ended up getting to go, go to a lot of club meds, right? So you went to uh, Chariting, Malaysia? Yeah. Do you have a funny, crazy monkey story for me? Oh, well, I, I don't personally, but yeah, Emily was, okay. telling, you know, she was well, sitting there and the stupid monkey, because she was working there. We'd go visit her. She, the stupid monkey grabbed her sunglasses and looked right yeah. at her, snapped them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you didn't you didn't have your own personal encounter. No, no personal encounter. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, you're supposed to give the, I told her you're supposed to give the monkey your digital camera. That's what he was waiting for. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to pass, you have to pay tribute. Okay. Were you in charity? Uh, no, I was in uh, Ria Bintan in uh, Indonesia for a year, but I had friends that worked in charting, but we had our own monkeys. So that's why I know if people go to Turks, I ask for a Jojo story. But if you worked in Asia, then I always ask for a, uh, a, a monkey story because, uh, you know, they're hilarious, you know, and, <laughs> and very intimidating. <laughs> yeah, 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 they, they are. All right. Now, you have any other stories? I don't want to, you've been so kind with your time. I don't want to let you go unless, and I know we covered a lot because you've been, you went to some pretty amazing villages, but I don't want you to leave unless I'm forgetting something important to ask you. Uh, but you've been kind with most of my, and all of my questions. So is there anything else? Uh, I mean, I, I, I do want to ask you about what was, if you had a favorite, like, uh, was it, was it when you were in Morea? Was that your favorite season? Or, you know, or did Morea you... was fantastic. But like we were only there for just under a month, right? Uh, Turks and Caicos is all around my, my favorite, right? It, Turks and Caicos is easy for me at, at my age now, right? Because a lot of repeaters, you know, it's easy to set up. Everybody knows what they're in for when they come to Turks. They know the rooms, they know the food, you know. You know, I did Columbus and I don't know if I do Columbus again, you know, it's just a little bit harder uh, uh, for me, you know. I really love Play Blanca was one of my favorites, right? Yeah, I, but Turks is by far. The, the people that come to Turks, uh, I don't know if you've been back there lately, but even working with Emily there, there's there's guys that come back every three months or every two months. And, you know, there's, there's so many repeaters and it's a pretty easy village to work in. Oh yeah, no, I I know a guy who's been there probably thirty or forty times since he's been going. You know, like people. Uh, I, I I haven't gone back, but I always did because yeah, Turks does hold a special place, and especially if you know you had you had such a, an incredible season there when you were there, right? Like if uh, if that many yeah. people are crying, then that means something, right? You know. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you always I always love Cancun, right? Yeah. You know, great village too i like the mexican people a luther is always great right you know all these 
you know, there was a fun place to, to live, right? You know. Uh, well, I've never been to Luther, but everyone talks about how how beautiful it was, right? Yeah, the sunsets. You know, I went and visited uh, Hammer and them in St. Lucia and had some moss in St. Lucia. And for a windsurfer, holy cow, that, that was quite intense. All the yeah. trees are blown on an angle because the wind just blows all day long. So yep. that, that, was, that was quite interesting too, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I was a, it was a probably one of the best spots for for windsurfing, uh, uh, and I think if I'm not mistaken, it came in from the the right. I think the wind, because <laughs> I remember just. Wow, Geo's, you had a good memory. I don't remember that. Yeah. I okay. <laughs> Geo's, I, I, Geo's on their I, lunch would just run run to the you know the little shuttle bus with their harness on, just to itching to get out, just a good forty five minutes. You know. Yeah. The water. <laughs> well, it was tough because I, I was still trying to learn how to water start there, right? So. <laughs> I got uh, watched a few times. Oh yeah, when yeah, that's pretty rough when to learn to learn. Uh, so how, how did you uh, learn to water start? I had a guy tell me, look, just go out, jump off your board, and tr- tread water, and try and keep the sail. Or did you just try it with the water completely in the water, and then try to rearrange it there? How did you? How were you told well, to water start? Uh, well, Jill, photographer, photographer Jill in, in Turks taught me the best. I think I just you know I just worked. Uh, when I could stand on the ground, I'd fluff my sail up and she would get me organized on it. You put your heel and then you go, and then you go a little deeper, a little deeper. I never okay. perfected it. I'm still, I'm still mad at that part. I, I, up at my lake right now, we, we have a lake. I, got, I bought a windsurf board up there. Right. And there's hardly any wind up there. Very, you know, very light wind. So I get out there and I, it's a big board, right. You know, I just go play on it, do some helicopter turns. And then every so often a storm will come in and I'll be out there ripping it up. My wife's sitting in, in the cabin, just laughing. You want a dummy? What is he doing out there? You'd catch this wind, and the, the board's big and heavy. I got a five point five, right? So I'm hanging on for my dear life, and I'm not going very fast. Yeah, you, oh. you had a five point five sail, and, and yeah, five point five, and you were still hauling butt. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it must, must yeah. have been really windy there. Holy Jesus! Yeah, it, you know, <laughs> every so often, you know, when a storm comes in, the wind just coming, and I'm just hanging on, you know. Now, isn't it a good thing about about Club Med? If you want to windsurf, like the equipment's there, you just take it. So now I'm sure at home, like, do you think about, oh, I got to put the wishbone on? I got to, you know, <laughs> do you ever get mad having to do because, or I'm sure, because I'm sure you don't, you, like, you roll up your sail, right? When you're, when you're done. Oh, you know what? At my lake, you know, yeah. I go for like two or three times since throughout the summer, right? I just hide it under a tree. Oh, okay. <laughs> and everybody okay. that's there because, with a little kind because of you. Because you know it's a pain in the butt to keep constantly. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. God, that, that's what I miss when people say, "What do you miss about club bed?" I say, "I miss lunch, and I miss just I could go windsurf on a on a dime if I want. I could just take the board and take the sail. It's already made up. You know, <laughs> it's already adjusted. The foot yeah, straps are in the right place." <laughs> I, I remember working in Turks, you know, my first season, and um, the wind would kick up, and all these people would come out, you know, like some maintenance people, some chefs, and all these yeah. people their secret boards and and they'd be out there just ripping it up man it was, it was pretty interesting boy yeah it's, it's a funny thing you get kind of you'll probably you probably realize this too like before like especially for you since you didn't sail or windsurf, if you didn't think yeah. nothing of it when it was windy right and yeah. now now when you start getting good at windsurfing you get addicted right and yeah, uh, it, just, when it's not windy you're you're kind of sad and if you can't go when it's windy you're you're really depressed right it's crazy right yeah 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 <laughs> It, it just seemed, you know, it's always funny when it, you know, kicked up and, you know, you see these guys that you work with these geos and they're walking by and look, I think we're going to get some wind and everybody's trying to plan it and then bang, you get three or four guys that they're just ripping it up. Right. Yeah. All, in all shapes and sizes, you know, you, you think of a windsurfer has got to be strong and manly and steadily in great shape, but no, you see all, all shapes and sizes on boards, just pulling off air jibes, you know, like what? That guy's from traffic. How did he just do an air jibe? <laughs> yeah, what's that traffic? I've never seen him down here before. I just saw him drink seven beers last night. Yeah. Uh, well, Ixtapa, uh, did you ever work at Ixtapa? No, no, never. So I loved Ixtapa. I went there and worked with Hammer, you know, a few times and and stuff like that. And, and you know, Xtapa working sailing, there would absolutely be zero wind. And, you know, the guests would come down and go, hey, we're on sail, we'll do this. Thing. And, and I'd say, hey, you know, I was never told anybody, no, you couldn't go. I said, yeah, come on down. And uh, I'd go, you know, sail, go through the thing or do a lesson or whatever. And then I'd give them a paddle from one of the, uh, the kayaks and said, here, what's that for? Well, yeah, there's yeah. no wind. So if you didn't <laughs> need to come back, that's what you're going to have to do. Exactly. <laughs> 
So it's basically a kayak lesson you wanted, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, sometimes you'd go for three or four days and there's not a cloud in the sky. There's not a wind. And yeah. I, I, that's a pretty tough couple of days when you're, when you're a sailing geo, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's rough on the beach. Yeah. And then, and then when, when there's too much wind, the people who shouldn't be going out are begging you to, you know, please <laughs> yeah. just give me a I just went to I just went back to Cancun with my wife and, we went with uh, a couple of the old geos, right? That, that we met. We usually go there for Fre- uh, Freddie's birthday. Freddie didn't want to pull it off during uh, COVID and stuff, but we went there and there's a few of us there. And, you know, the wind really kicked up, right? So, oh man, it was fine. I was trying to get on the one pontoon and the Hobie cat, right? Without capsizing. So, that, <laughs> with that wind. And every day there was a pretty good wind, right? So, you know, we'd let's eat breakfast down there and then we eat breakfast and I'd sneak out and go do that for two hours. Right. Yeah. Well, so can I ask you one last question? Uh, Chief? Sure. All right. So since you're a recruiter, uh, you know, I normally ask this question to uh, all the XGOs, but, but I assume that since you're recruiting that if there was a, um, if you had any advice, so if you had someone listening to this who had never been and uh, was thinking about applying to club med, should they? Oh, hundred percent. I think club meds are, great education for anybody you know i think a lot of people just don't travel very much and get to see the world right like i i you know working in club med you worked with people that were different religions that couldn't work because you know they're you know they're not eating for a week or or they had to uh, celebrate you just learn different people and uh and you get to learn a job that you know you you don't have to pay for like you know running a windsurfing and sailing um shack right you don't pay for it. You just run it. You learn everything. I, 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 I'm 100% full club med for anybody, <laughs> any age, any time, you know, just, just go do it. Right. Well, yes. That's well, very well said, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, really, I uh, want to take you time uh, or thank you for your time, you know, taking time out of your schedule to talk to me is very, very kind of you and sharing your story with us here today. No problem. My pleasure. I'll, I talk club med a lot. Even at my work still these days, people are talking, somehow club med comes up in the conversation. I'll end up spending a half hour telling them about club med. <laughs> well, I hope to see you at a, another uh, reunion coming up shortly. And I promise to remember what year it is when I, uh, when I talk about it. Well, I was at them all, so. <laughs> okay. I probably met you at both of them. Okay. Well, I just haven't went to the, 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 the last, in the last five years or something, I haven't really made those ones. Yeah. I think by the time yours, um, your episode airs, though, the uh, one in May will have gone off. So I know they're, yeah, yeah. the big uh, Forever Geo one is going off. But yeah, I do hope Kevin to see and, you. Sorry. When Kevin and Hammer ran them, they were a little bit different, right? You just got a little bit bigger group come there. So I think yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll, they'll always be reunions, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're too big a family now. <laughs> no kidding. Well, everyone, that was from Vancouver, uh, Mr. Cheese Jensen. Cheese, thanks again uh, so much for coming on and sharing your story. No problem. My pleasure again. And we'll see you all next week, people. Say bye, Cheese, but don't hang up. Bye. Okay.